Section 12 of The Stratagems and the Aqueducts of Rome. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Tassanzo. The Stratagems and the Aqueducts of Rome by Frontinus. Translated by Charles Bennett. The Stratagems. Book 3, Part 2. 6. On Distracting the Attention of a Hostile Garrison When Hannibal had returned to Africa, many towns were still held by strong forces of the Carthaginians. Scipio's policy demanded that these towns should be reduced. Accordingly, he often sent troops to assault them. Finally, he would appear before the towns as though bent on sacking them, and would then retire, feigning fear hannibal thinking his alarm real withdrew the garrison from all points and began to follow as though determined to fight a decisive battle scipio having thus accomplished what he intended with the assistance of massinissa and the numidians captured the towns which had thus been stripped of their defenders publius cornelius scipio appreciating the difficulty of capturing delminus because it was defended by the concerted efforts of the population of the district began to assault other towns then when the inhabitants of the various towns had been called back to defend their homes scipio took delminus which had been left without support pyrrhus king of epirus in his war against the illyrians aimed to reduce their capital but despairing of this began to attack the other towns and succeeded in making the enemy disperse to protect their other cities since they had confidence in the apparently adequate fortification of the capital when he had accomplished this he recalled his own forces and captured the town now left without defenders the consul cornelius rufinus for some time besieged the city of crotona without success since it had been made impregnable by the arrival of a band of lucanian reinforcements he therefore pretended to desist from his undertaking and by offers of great rewards induced a certain prisoner to go to crotona this emissary by feigning to have escaped from custody persuaded the inhabitants to believe his report that the romans had withdrawn the people of crotona thinking this to be true dismissed their allies then weakened by being stripped of their defenders they were surprised and captured mago general of the carthaginians having defeated Nias piso and having blockaded the tower wherein he had taken refuge suspecting that reinforcements would come to his relief sent a deserter to persuade the approaching troops that piso was already captured having thus scared them off mago made his victory complete alcibiades wishing to capture the city of syracuse in sicily chose from among the people of Catana, where he was encamped a certain man of tested shrewdness and sent him to the syracusans this man when brought before the public assembly of the syracusans persuaded them that the people of Catana were very hostile to the athenians and that if assisted by the syracusans they would crush the athenians and alcibiades along with them induced by these representations the syracusans left their own city and set out in full force to join the people of Catana, whereupon alcibiades attacked syracuse from the rear and finding it unprotected as he had hoped brought it under subjection when the people of treason were held in subjection by troops under the command of craterus the athenian cleonymus made an assault on the town and hurled within its walls missiles inscribed with messages stating that cleonymus had come to liberate their state at the same time certain prisoners whom he had won over to his side were sent back to disparage craterus by this plan he stirred up internal strife among the besieged and bringing up his troops gained possession of the city seven on diverting streams and contaminating waters publius servilius diverted the stream from which the inhabitants of Asura drew their water and thus forced them to surrender in consequence of thirst gaius caesar in one of his gallic campaigns deprived the city of the cadursi of water although it was surrounded by a river and abounded in springs for he diverted the springs by subterranean channels while his archers shut off all access to the river lucius metellus when fighting in hither spain diverted the course of a river and directed it from a higher level against the camp of the enemy which was located on low ground 
then when the enemy were in panic from the sudden flood he had them slain by men whom he had stationed in ambush for this very purpose at babylon which is divided into two parts by the river euphrates alexander constructed both a ditch and an embankment the enemy supposing that the earth was being taken out merely to form the embankment alexander accordingly suddenly diverting the stream entered the town along the former river bed which had dried up and thus afforded an entrance to the town semiramis is said to have done the same thing in the war against the babylonians by diverting the same euphrates glisthenes of sicyon cut the water pipes leading into the town of the Crissians. then when the townspeople were suffering from thirst he turned on the water again now poisoned with hellebore when the inhabitants used this they were so weakened by diarrhoea that clisthenes overcame them eight on terrorizing the besieged when philip was unable by the utmost exertions to capture the fortress of Parnassus, he made excavations of earth directly in front of the walls and pretended to be constructing a tunnel the men within the fortress imagining that they were being undermined surrendered pleopatus the theban on one occasion planned to make a simultaneous attack on two towns of the magnates not very far distant from each other as he advanced against one of these towns he gave orders that in accordance with preconcerted arrangements four horsemen should come from the other camp with garlands on their heads and with the marked eagerness of those who announce a victory to complete the illusion he arranged to have a forest between the two cities set on fire to give the appearance of a burning town besides this he ordered certain prisoners to be led along dressed in the costume of the townspeople when the besieged had been terrified by these demonstrations deeming themselves already defeated in one quarter they ceased to offer resistance cyrus king of the persians at one time forced croesus to take refuge in sardis on one side a steep hill prevented access to the town here near the walls cyrus erected masts equal to the height of the ridge of the hill and on them placed dummies of armed men dressed in persian uniforms at night he brought these to the hill then at dawn he attacked the walls from the other side as soon as the sun rose and the dummies flashing in the sunlight revealed the garb of warriors the townspeople imagining that their city had been captured from the rear scattered in flight and left the field to the enemy nine on attacks from an unexpected quarter scipio when fighting before carthage approached the walls of the city just before the turn of the tide guided as he said by some god then when the tide went out in the shallow lagoon he burst in at that point the enemy not expecting him there fabius maximus son of fabius cunctator finding arpi occupied by hannibal's forces first inspected the site of the town and then sent six hundred soldiers on a dark night to mount the walls with scaling ladders at a part of the town which was fortified and therefore less guarded and to tear down the gates these men were aided in the execution of their orders by the noise of the falling rain which deadened the sound of their operations in another quarter fabius himself made an attack at a given signal and captured arpi in the eugrathene war gaius marius was at one time besieging a fortress situated near the maluka river it stood on a rocky eminence accessible on one side by a single narrow path while the other side as though by special design was precipitous it happened that a certain ligurian a common soldier from among the auxiliaries had gone out to procure water and while gathering snails among the rocks of the mountain had reached the summit this man reported to marius that it was possible to clamber up to the stronghold marius accordingly sent a few centurions in company with his fleetest soldiers including also the most skilful trumpeters these men went bareheaded and barefooted that they might see better and make their way more easily over the rocks their shields and swords were fastened to their backs guided by the ligurian and aided by straps and staffs with which they support themselves they made their way up to the rear of the fortress which owing to its position was without defenders and then began to sound their trumpets and make a great uproar as they had previously been directed at this signal marius steadfastly urging on his men began to advance with renewed fury against the defenders of the fortress the latter were recalled from the defence by the populace 
who had lost heart under the impression that the town had been captured from the rear so that marius was enabled to press on and capture the fort the consul lucius cornelius rufinus captured numerous towns in sardinia by landing powerful detachments of troops at night with instructions to remain in hiding and to wait till he himself drew near to land with his ships then as the enemy came to meet him at his approach he led them a long chase by pretending to flee while his other troops attacked the cities thus abandoned by their inhabitants pericles the athenian general was once besieging a city which was protected by very determined defenders at night he ordered the trumpet to be sounded and a loud outcry to be raised at a quarter of the walls adjacent to the sea the enemy thinking that the town had been entered at that point abandoned the gates whereupon as soon as these were left without defence pericles burst into the town alcibiades the athenian general planning to assault Sisychus, approached the town unexpectedly at night and commanded his trumpeters to sound their instruments at a different part of the fortifications the defenders of the walls were ample but since they all flocked to the side where alone they imagined themselves to be attacked alcibiades succeeded in scaling the walls at the point where there was no resistance thrasybulus general of the milesians in his effort to seize the harbour of the Sicyonians, made repeated attacks upon the inhabitants from the land side then when the enemy directed their attention to the point where they were attacked he suddenly seized the harbour with his fleet philip while besieging a certain coast town secretly lashed ships together in pairs with a common deck over all and erected towers on them then launching an attack with other towers by land he distracted the attention of the defenders of the city till he brought up by sea the ships provided with towers and advanced against the walls at the point where no resistance was offered pericles when about to lay siege to a fortress of the peloponnesians to which there were only two avenues of approach cut off one of these by a trench and began to fortify the other the defenders of the fortress thrown off their guard at one point began to watch only the other where they saw the building going on but pericles having prepared bridges laid them across the trench and entered the fortress at the point where no guard was kept antiochus when fighting against the ephesians directed the rhodians whom he had as allies to make an attack on the harbour at night with a great uproar when the entire population rushed headlong to this quarter leaving the rest of the fortress without defenders antiochus attacked at a different quarter and captured the town ten on setting traps to draw out the besieged when cato was besieging the lasitani he sent away in full view of the enemy all his other troops while ordering certain suesitani who were the least martial of his allies to attack the walls of the town when the lasitani making a sortie easily repulsed these forces and pursued them eagerly as they fled the soldiers whom cato had placed in hiding rose up and by their help he captured the town when campaigning in sardinia lucius scipio in order to draw out the defenders of a certain city abandoned the siege which he had begun and pretended to flee with the detachment of his troops then when the inhabitants followed him pell-mell he attacked the town with the help of those whom he had placed in hiding near at hand when hannibal was besieging the city of himera he purposely allowed his camp to be captured ordering the carthaginians to retire on the ground that the enemy were superior the inhabitants were so deceived by this turn of affairs that in their joy they came out of the city and advanced against the carthaginian breastworks whereupon hannibal finding the town vacant captured it by means of the troops whom he had placed in ambush for this very contingency in order to draw out the saguntines hannibal on a certain occasion advanced against their walls with a thin line of troops then at the first sally of the inhabitants feigning flight he withdrew and interposing troops between the pursuing foe and the city he slaughtered the enemy thus cut off from their fellows between the two forces himilco the carthaginian when campaigning near agrigentum placed part of his forces in ambush near the town and directed them to set fire to some damp wood as soon as the soldiers from the town should come forth then advancing at daybreak with the rest of his army for the purpose of luring forth the enemy he feigned flight and drew the inhabitants after him for a considerable distance by his retirement the men in ambush near the walls applied the torch to the wood-piles as directed 
the agrigentines beholding the smoke ascend thought their city on fire and ran back in alarm to protect it being encountered by those lying in wait for them near the walls and beset in the rear by those whom they had just been pursuing they were caught between two forces and so cut to pieces viriatus on one occasion having placed men in ambush sent a few others to drive off the flocks of the Segobrigenses. when the latter rushed out in great numbers to defend their flocks and followed up the marauders who pretended to flee they were drawn into an ambush and cut to pieces when lucullus was put in charge of a garrison of two cohorts at heraclea the cavalry of the sordici by pretending to drive off the flocks of the inhabitants provoked a sortie then when lucullus followed they drew him into an ambush feigning flight and killed him together with eight hundred of his followers the athenian general cares when about to attack a city on the coast hid his fleet behind certain promontories and then ordered his swiftest ship to sail past the forces of the enemy at the sight of this ship all the forces guarding the harbor darted out in pursuit whereat cares sailed in with the rest of his fleet and took possession of the undefended harbor and likewise of the city itself on one occasion when roman troops were blockading lilibium by land and sea barca general of the carthaginians in sicily ordered a part of his fleet to appear in the offing ready for action when our men darted out at the sight of this barca seized the harbor of lilibium with the ships which he had held in hiding eleven on pretended retirements when the athenian general formio had ravaged the lands of the chalcidians and their envoys complained of this action he answered them graciously and at evening when he was about to dismiss them pretended that a letter had come from his fellow-citizens requiring his return accordingly he retired a short distance and dismissed the envoys when these reported that all was safe and that formio had withdrawn the chalcidians in view of the promised consideration and of the withdrawal of the troops relaxed the guard of their town then formio suddenly returned and the chalcidians were unable to withstand his unexpected attack when the spartan commander agesilaus was blockading the phocians and had learned that those who were then lending them support were weary with the burdens of war he retired a short distance as though for other objects thus leaving the allies free opportunity to withdraw not long after bringing back his troops he defeated the phocians thus left without assistance when fighting against the byzantines who kept within their walls alcibiades laid an ambush and feigning a retirement took them off their guard and crushed them viriatus after retreating for three days suddenly turned around and traversed the same distance in one day he thus crushed the segobrigenses taking them off their guard at a moment when they were earnestly engaged in sacrifice in the operations around mantinea epimendanus having noticed that the spartans had come to help his enemies conceived the idea that sparta might be captured if he should set out against it secretly accordingly he ordered numerous watch-fires to be built at night that by appearing to remain he might conceal his departure but betrayed by a deserter and pursued by the lacedaemonian troops he abandoned his march to sparta and employed the same scheme against the mantineans for by building watch-fires as before he deceived the spartans into thinking that he would remain meanwhile returning to mantinea by a march of forty miles he found it without defences and captured it end of section twelve